Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm just going to go ahead and invite some people really quickly so that we can read the word of God together. Amen. Let me just invite some people. God is so good. So I'm, in, I'm feeling like teaching today. Some days you just feel like teaching. Other days you feel like um, just focusing on praying. And so you have to be led by the Spirit. Okay? So let me invite some people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I cover my broadcast right now with the blood of Jesus. I cover my family. And everybody who's listening to me, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. God is moving, and those who are paying attention, you will get your blessing. It's very important for us to pray attention. Amen? Welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to be reading from John chapter 6. John chapter 6 is what we're going to be reading from today. And so you know me, I'm going to take my time so that I can make sure I learn what the Holy Spirit, you know, is trying to teach me. If you have not been following the prayers on my pod bean account, okay, I'm going to put the link for you to follow the prayers on there. Okay. So John, John chapter six, Holy Spirit, have your way. I decrease Father God so that your spirit can increase in me. I pray, Father God, that you send your angels right now, your warrior angels, to fight for me, to fight for those who are listening, Father, to fight for our families. I pray, Father God, that you release your ministering angels, Father, to minister unto us. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you please forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us with the redeeming and atoning blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you. We accept your forgiveness. Father God, right now, we're coming like Mary, not like Martha, we're not trying to be distracted. We will be like Mary at the feet of Jesus, trying to learn. I pray, Father God, that you would teach us. Open up our eyes and our ears, our hearts, our minds. Father God, open us up so we can receive from you. A closed container cannot receive anything. So I pray, Father God, that you will open us up so you can fill us up until we overflow. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So the name John I need my scribes to help me. Hi, Kennedy. Hi, Destiny. If you can hear me, you just say, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. So John means Yahweh is gracious. And so I want you to decree and declare that Yahweh is gracious unto me. You want to speak those things that be not as though they were. So I want you to write it down. I decree and I declare that Yahweh is gracious unto me. Okay, so the name John means Yahweh is gracious. Okay, and so the Holy Spirit has been showing me the um, the name Hannah. So Hannah means grace. And my name, Stacy Ann, Ann comes from Hannah. It means grace. And when you have the grace of God, honey, that means you have the favor of God. And surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Amen. So I'm just like, thank you, God. You cannot do anything without God. Right? You need God's grace, God's favor. Okay, so let's look up the word gracious. So gracious means courteous, kind, pleasant. Okay? So Yahweh is gracious unto me. That means Yahweh is kind to me. Amen? And so God is not trying to punish you. When you, when you go to God, he said, listen, give me your ashes and I'm going to give you a beautiful crown. He's like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hurt you. Come on to me, all ye that are heavy laden, stressed out, overwhelmed, and I will give you rest. So God wants us to come to him so that he can bless us. He's a good father. I know sometimes we have this mindset that God is so bad and he want to punish me. Yeah, God's going to punish the wicked. But if you're serving God. You know, he wants to bless you. Look at that. Carol said, my middle name is Ann. That's why we're twins. That's why we get along. <laughs> Ann is grace. Yahweh is gracious unto us. Amen. So you know me. I have to really take my time 
to understand. And, you know, I can go on and on and on, but let's read John chapter 6. So it says that sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far, the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. That is the Sea of Tiberias. Okay? And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. And so I'm telling you, after I came back from Let's Go Weekend, I have a crowd that's following our business. Why? Because Yahweh is gracious unto the righteous. And you will reap what you have sown. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. That is a promise to us from God. He wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to be, he wants us to multiply. A great crowd followed Jesus. Why? Because they saw the manifestation of the power of God upon his life. And so people are watching you. People are watching me. And they're like thinking, wait a minute. Wasn't you, weren't you the one who was just homeless the other day? Mm-hmm. Not homeless anymore. Weren't you the one that almost died from a sickness? Not sick anymore. Healed by Yahweh Rapha. Right? Blessed by Yahweh Jireh, our provider. Right? And so people are watching your life. Not so they can worship you. Because we, we, don't, we don't glorify ourselves. Right? We understand. That's basic elementary teaching. We already know. We draw people to God. Right? But God is going to send people your way. Because they see the glory of the Lord on your life. And they're going to come to your business. Right? They're going to want to connect to you. That's why you have to be careful though. Because everybody is coming. The wheat and the tares. So that's where discerning of spirit comes in. We have been praying for months, years. Those of you who are following me on YouTube, we've been praying and praying and praying and we'll still keep on praying. But I'm here to let you know those prayers, they have caused a breakthrough in the second heavens. And Yahweh is gracious unto you. And he has opened up the windows of heaven. And he's pouring down blessings upon us. That we will not have room to receive it. Why? Because you went to God with a mustard seed faith. When you go to God with a little bit of faith. Listen. The mustard is very small. The mustard seed is very small. And because you gave God your little bit. God said I'm blessing you exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that you can ever ask or think think i'm telling you a crowd of people have been following us at goldwarrior1.com what are they coming for what are they coming for there are plenty of businesses out there because the glory of the lord has been revealed and this let me tell you you can't even hide it i met a lady two weeks ago i was on my way to church out of nowhere, at, at, I was at the park. I was parked at the gas station, and she came over to me. And you know, I'm very, I'm very particular about people because I know the wheat and the tear will show up together, looking the same way. So she said, "She said, woman of, she said, bless woman of God." And she began to twirl around, and she mm -hmm. said, "You cannot hide the glory of the Lord on your life." And then she began to speak these things to me that only God could have told her. And I'm looking at her and she said, you cannot hide the glory. And I say this to you as well. Those of you who are listening to me, you cannot hide the, the glory of the Lord. You can't hide it from people. It's glowing. People can see it. And so the Bible says a great crowd of people follow Jesus. What I love about Jesus is even though a large crowd followed him, he only had 12 disciples. So we're not studying the crowd, but they're coming. They're coming and they're registering for their free gold savings account. It's free, honey. Mustard seed. It's free to join. And we can show you how to be a millionaire or more with a free account. Some people are going to believe and some people will not believe. And the ones who don't believe, it's okay. It's okay. I'm only dealing with the eagles in this hour. I'm only dealing with people who have faith in this hour. 
And so if we sit in here talk about we blessed of God and we serve Yahweh and we quote all these scriptures, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I am the head and not the tail above all and never beneath. And we say these things, but we were, many people don't they don't believe what they're saying. And you can tell because they have no fruit. They have no fruit. I'm going to tell you, if my husband and I can do it, you can do it. My husband I'm almost died in his sleep. You know my story. Lost everything almost, homeless. Look at us now. Over 1,000 people on our team in Carrot Bars and still growing. There's some people who we brought into the business. They've never been business owners before. Now their businesses are thriving. God is real. I am that person, used to be homeless, okay? I am that person who was struggling. I struggle no more. I struggle no more, why? Because I understand a principle in God. He said, you will reap what you have sown. What have you planted in the earth? What have you planted? You will reap that thing. So if you planted anything that was evil, you better pray for crop failure now. But if you were diligently seeking the Lord, he getting ready to reward you. And it's not going to be a little bit. I speak a 5,000 fold blessing upon you to infinity. I speak it over my household as well. In the name of Jesus. Destiny said my millionaires are manifesting in Jesus name. Yes, look at you now. Yes, God is real. God is, I was the one who was struggling to get gas to put in the car to go to work. After, after praying for people and ministering to people on, you know, YouTube and couldn't, and didn't have enough gas because the warfare is real, but God is gracious. Yahweh is gracious unto us. And so the Bible says a, a great crowd began to follow Jesus. Why? Because of all the signs he had performed by healing the sick. God has sent us to heal the sick. People are sick in different ways, including the area of finances. This is where the religious people go crazy. But that's why I'm not called, I'm not, I'm not talking to the religious people. Because if you have no money, you're gonna be homeless. If you have no money, you cannot feed your children. And that is not a good representation of the Lord Jesus Christ. God said, my people will never beg for bread. How you talk about God speaking in tongues, dragging your kids to church, and you can't feed your children? They're not going to want to serve your God. The God I know in the Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The God I serve, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now unto him who's able, okay? He said, above all things, I want your soul. He, want, he said, I want you to prosper. This is the verse that the Lord gave me in my sleep about almost what, over two weeks ago. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, to give you a hope, to give you a future. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Prosperous means you are successful. There's no way you're serving God and you're always struggling, don't have nothing. That's the devil. You need to bind him and cast him out. That, that's, a, that's a strong man of poverty. That's trying to chase you down. That's curses. Destroy them. God said, I've given you dominion in the earth. He said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion in the earth. Not dominating people. Okay? Power and authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall hurt you. Okay? That's the confidence we need to have going forward, honey. I'm going to brag on my God. And guess what? I might not see the riches with my physical eye, but I see it in the spirit. So some people are like, I don't see it. You better see it in the spirit. Get your Bible, open it up, Psalm 23. Open up your Bible, Psalm 1. You shall be like a tree that's planted by the river banks and you will bear your fruit and your leaves will never wither and whatever you do will prosper. Go back to Psalm 
one. Then go to John 15. He said, if you remain in me, you're going to bear much fruit. I bear much fruit in my business. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in John 6, let's keep on going. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside. And he sat down and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. Okay. And verse five, when Jesus looked up, he saw a great crowd coming toward him. And so he said to Philip, okay, Philip, I've been seeing the word fill for a few weeks. Fill means love. And, and then Philip is the lovers of horses. And if you've been following my, my prayers, I just did a prayer about the horses. God said he's doing a swift work in you. The horses are so fast. And listen, and God said he's strengthening you. The horses are strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Okay, the Lord is the, the Lord is the strength of my life, Psalm 27. And so in this hour, we are God's race horses. If when you begin to study the horses, do you know that the horse, okay, they don't all sleep at one time. At least one will stay awake while the others are sleeping to keep watch. Come on now. The watchman gotta stay awake. Gallop, 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 which will go with the revelation, um, the, the, the story in Revelation 19. I'm talking about horses. The, the rider, his name is Faithful and True. He's called the Word of God, and he's riding on the white horses and heaven's army. They're riding on the horses, and they're coming to rescue us. And the Bible says that all around us, we have, we have fiery chariots and horses. The angels are around us like fiery chariots. And so every demonic spirit that's chasing you, every pharaoh on their chariots and their horses that's coming after you, they're going to drown in the Red Sea. And the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more forever. We are God's racehorses galloping into our future. Why? Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says to give you a future. To give you. Remember I told you I had a dream about the horseshoe? It was, it was a street sign. And there was... It wasn't, the, it wasn't the name. It was just the sign of the horse, the horse shoe. Gallop, gallop, gallop. Also, the horse represents warfare. Whew, this is for somebody. Let me give it to you, and I, I got to keep on going because. Okay. Horses represent warfare, battle. Okay. 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 Holy Spirit, thank you. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, okay, okay. Let me find this verse for somebody. I don't know who this is for, but it might be for me. Yo, okay, what is it? What's that verse? What's that verse? What's, what's that verse? <laughs> Found it. I don't know who this is for. Hmm. But Isaiah 40 verse 2 says, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. Okay? Let's go to the King James. Let's go to King James. All the go back to King James. Whew. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Jerusalem means the city of peace, I think it is. And God said we're supposed to be peacemakers. Jerusalem. All right? And so it says, speak tenderly, speak kindly to Jerusalem and tell her that her time of warfare is over. Thank you, God. Some people you've been going through and going through and going through. Go read Revelation 19. That is your portion. That is your portion. That is your birthright, your warfare. That thing that's been coming after you. The familiar spirits that's been plaguing you and following you. The curses over. And you shall reap what you have sown. You've been serving God. He said he, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Have you been diligently seeking the Lord? We have been diligently working our business. Traveling to Texas. We done traveled to Vegas. We traveled all the way to Florida. We've been working our business. And God is blessing us exceedingly and abundantly. And listen, everybody... I that's a part of our team. We all winning because our warfare has ended. It, 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 listen, it has ended. And now we're getting ready to reap a, a, a 5,000 fold blessing. 
Why am I saying 5,000? Because the story is going to tell you that Jesus fed 5,000 and more. Let me tell you what the number 1,000 represent in the Bible. I, I had to get my notes. 1,000. Deuteronomy 1.11 says a thousandfold blessing. Okay? A thousandfold blessing. Now, Christ fed 5,000 and more. Five is symbolic of grace. Yahweh is gracious unto us. 1,000. The word 1,000. The number 1,000. It means immensity. Extremely large size. God getting ready to bless you real good. It's going to be immense. It's going to be immense. It's bigger than what you think. He said, I will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. Above all that you can ever ask or think. Some people are not thinking anymore. Some people are not hoping anymore. You got to get your hope back. The Bible says, they that hope in the Lord, aspire in the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's time for you to dream again. The Bible says, hope deferred. Make your heart sick. God said, dream again. Believe again. I'm going to do it big for you. The word, it says, the word immensity means extremely large size. And, and that's what a thousand means. It represents fullness of quantity. Fullness. I speak this over every area of our lives. 5,000 fold blessing to infinity. I'm talking about a thousand fold love in your marriage. To infinity. Hallelujah. A thousandfold blessings upon our children to infinity. God said, I will bless you to a thousand generations who love me. God said, I'll bless you. That's the covenant he made with Abraham. The blessings of Abraham belong to us. I want all my blessings. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. We shall be blessed in the city, blessed in the fields, blessed everywhere. We are the head, not the tail. Listen, above only, never beneath. We are the lender, not the borrower. I want all my blessings that's coming from Abraham through Jesus. Christ became a curse for us so that we can get the blessings of Abraham. And I'm not letting no devil rob me. The thief has been caught. He must give us back seven times what he has stolen. The enemy has been robbing you, robbing me. But listen, he's caught. I bind the spirits of poverty. I bind the spirit of strong men of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I bind and cast you out. Every strong man, any, every evil spirit, I bind and cast you out into the abyss. I release the Holy Ghost. I release the blood of Jesus upon us. I set the captives free. According to Isaiah 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord God is upon me upon you as well. He has sent us to set the captives free. We have come to proclaim the good news. The, the 1,000 fold, 1,000 means multitude, indefinite quantity. God going to bless you so good. So good. The same way he did right here in the story with the people who were hungry. Now let's go back to the story. It says that they were on the mountain and and they saw the um the great crowd and 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 it says philip philip is asking philip says you know philip means lover, lover of horses and then philip is like where shall we buy bread for these people to eat many people you're wondering they're going to question there is something that you need and you're asking god what am i gonna do so philip is asking the question where shall we buy bread for these People to eat. All these people. What are we going to do? Let me get a paper towel. What are we going to do? So you see something going on in your life. And you're like, Lord, what are we going to do? You're going to go to Jesus and ask Jesus what are we going to do? Wasn't this the same Jesus that worked all these miracles? And you're going to go to Jesus and say, what are we going to do? Many of us do the same thing with God. God, what am I going to do? What am I, how are you going to fix my marriage? What are you going to do, Father God, my, my children? Do we not know who we're talking to? He is the creator of everything. And we're going to him and we're like, God, you, what am I going to do? Where are we going to find, find bread to feed all these people? And so in verse 6 of John 6, Jesus asks, and it says this only to test him. So Jesus was testing Philip. 
For he already had in mind what he was going to do. God, write this down. God, God already have, have it in his mind how he's going to bless you. God, nothing is catching God by surprise. God is not sitting there like, wait a minute, what am I going to do? Destiny's in trouble. What am I going to do? Carol is in trouble. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And he knows everything about you. Okay? He know, he know exactly how he's going to deliver you. Amen? And so it says that Jesus was testing Philip. And in verse 7, okay? Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Wait, Jesus asked him, excuse me, Jesus asked him, what shall we buy, what sh where shall we buy bread for these people to eat, okay? And then Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. And so in verse 8, another of his the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? And so I love how in this story, Jesus is showing you that even if you have nothing, right? Nothing. You can create something great out of nothing. This reminds me of carrot bars. Because people ask me, how much do I need to join carrot bars? And when we tell them that it's a free account, they don't believe us. They're like, wait a minute. You can help us to make money? How much money do I need to start? And we tell them, listen, it's free. It's free for you to open up your account, right? And so I love how they're using a the little boy, okay? That means there's hope for all of us. It says, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. How much? Five barley loaves and two small fish. Five is symbolic of grace. Yahweh is gracious unto us. Two, okay, unity, right? How can two, how can two walk together? Let's stay, let's stay agree. Total seven. Seven is completion and perfection. So here's a little boy. He got a little bit. A little boy with a little bit. And there's a great crowd. That's when you know God is in this. Because God is always going to make sure you're in a predicament where you have to rely on him. God is always going to put you in a predicament where you have to use your faith. This reminds me of when Moses was standing and the children of Israel, they were before the Red Sea. And you have Pharaoh coming with the army. Remember, the, the, the army was like, what is it, iron chariots? So the army is coming over behind them. Over there is the wilderness. Over there is the wilderness. And right in front of them, you have the Red Sea. And Moses and the people are like, what are we going to do? And God says, what are you crying about? Use what you have in your hand. And so it, it challenged Moses to activate his faith. And so whatever it is that you're going through, if it seems impossible, God is allowing that situation there so that only God will get the glory out of your situation. What do I mean by that? You got 5,000 something people right here. And the only food they have is a, from a little boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. And it says, how far will they go among so many? This is not enough. This is not, this is not even going to help us that much. But we serve the God of more than enough. Amen. He is, he is El Shaddai, the Lord who has a lot. Okay. He, he, I mean, he is the breasted one of Israel. And so in verse 10, Jesus said, have the people sit down. Because God always has a plan. He said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And so they all sat down. About 5,000 men were there. They didn't count the, the women. They didn't count the children. It says about 5,000 men. So it's a lot of people. Verse 11. Jesus then took the loaves. He took the little bit. He didn't complain. Some people would have been like, oh my God, it's... It's, too, it's not enough. He didn't do that. He took the loaves. How many loaves? The five barley loaves. He took a little bit. And what did he do? The Bible says Jesus gave thanks. You have to have a heart of gratitude. When you're going through, and, and you, you know that only God can do it. If God doesn't do it, you're not going to be helped. And so Jesus gave thanks. We have to do the same thing. Even in your business. 
You're like, Father God, I only have, I'm talking to myself. Father God, I only have two people who are, who are working the business. Only two. Give thanks. Father God, my marriage is not the best. And Father God, we, we only go out every two months. Give thanks. Why? When you have a heart of gratitude and you're thankful, it brings in the presence of God. It brings in the presence of God. How do I know? Right here in this story. He gave thanks. And by faith, okay, so I love Jesus because he had action faith. He told him, sit down. Okay, sit down. Then he took the little bit. And then he gave thanks to God for the little bit. And then he began by faith to distribute to, um, to those who were seated as much as they wanted, it says. He began to pass out the food. And then he took the, um, it says he did the same thing with the fish. So he didn't complain about it. He, he gave thanks to God for his little bit. And when he began, it's like the woman with a little bit of oil. She went to Elisha, I think it was. And she said, my husband is dead. And they're getting ready to take my sons. And they're going to make them sla um, slaves or servants or whatever, slaves. And the prophet asked her, he said, what do you have in your house? And she said, I don't have anything. And then she said, wait a minute, I do have a little bit of oil. And the man of God told her, go and borrow empty bottles from your neighbor. And, 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 and he said, I want you to go in the house with your sons, your two sons, with your little bit of oil. Because God is always going to work with the little bit so he can multiply so he can get the glory. And so they went in the house and locked the door. And they began to fill up the bottles, a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil. They began to pour it into the bottles. And the Bible says that all the containers got, were filled up. And that's when the oil stopped flowing. So I believe that if she had more bottles, that's why you got you to gotta think big. You got to think big because... For all the empty containers, God was going to fulfill it. Why? Because God says, my word will not return back unto me void. It will be accomplished. I told you, I'm going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly. And so if that lady had more bottles, God would have filled that thing. And so whatever little bit that you have, you bring it to God, that little bit. And God's going to fill it up for you by faith. Don't despise humble beginning. Do not despise humble beginning. In the name of Jesus, take your little bit and bring it to God. And God will multiply that thing in the name of Jesus. And so it says, he began to pass it out. And in verse 12, when they had, it says, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. God going to bless you so good that there will be leftovers. There will be leftovers. Because God says it has to be a thousandfold. A thousand means immensity. A great number. And so from five barley loaves and two fish. Everybody ate and there was leftovers. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the Bible says, he said, gather the pieces that are left over. And he says, let nothing be wasted. Father God, forgive us for being wasteful. We repent today. Let nothing be wasted. In the name of Jesus. And it goes on to say, verse 13. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten they gathered them and filled 12 additional, it says 12 baskets. That's why this reminds me of Joseph. Joseph's name means Yahweh increase. 
God is increasing us. I'm talking about anything that's godly. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that we need will be added unto us. God says to Jesus, said through Jesus, I've come that you will have life and have life more abundantly. And so expect God to enlarge you. Like the prayer of Jabez, he said, enlarge my territory. And God granted his request. In the book of Isaiah 54, God says, spread out to the left and to the right. Rehoboth means spacious place. God is multiplying us. He is spreading us out. Why? Because we went to him with our little bit. And we gave thanks to God for the little bit. And he's going to multiply your little bit. I don't care what it is. He who has an ear to hear. In the name of Jesus. Give thanks. Give thanks. Do not despise humble beginning. Because when you go to God, God has a way of elevating you, enlarging you like he did for Joseph. His name means Yahweh will add, Yahweh will increase. And then he had a son named Ephraim, and his name means fruitful. The Bible says we are to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And so I speak that over all of us in the name of Jesus, that God will open up our eyes. Mm. That God will, especially for the business owners, that God will open up our eyes and show us, show us how to make that thing work for the glory of God. God's going to give you divine strategies. He's going to give you divine insight. Now is not the time to be afraid. Because sometimes people get nervous when God starts to bless you. You're so, you're so used to warfare. He said your warfare is ended. Hallelujah. God has given us rest. Some people you've been going through and fighting and going through. Christ says, cast your cares on me. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He said, I'll give you rest. When God begin to bless you so good, it make you just rest. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop asking God silly questions. Christ was testing Philip in the beginning. It was a test. Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? We do that all the time. God, what am I going to do? God, what am I going to do? And we're talking to Elohim. He knows exactly what we need to do. He knows that there's a need. And he's come to meet the needs. He knew Abraham and Sarah needed a baby. Why? He knew they needed a baby because he said, I'm going to bless your baby. He said, nations are going to come out of your baby. And so even though they were dried up and, and, and looking like the, the, the plan was not going to work, that God was not going to answer, God is a God of his word. He is a covenant-keeping God. And so I don't care how dry up it is. I don't care how bad it looks. You got all these people, 5,000. And a little boy, only a little boy. And you know, if today in today's society, if we dare take rob a little kid of their food, we will be on social media. We will be on the news like they done took little boy's food. But the point is, he took a little bit and he multiplied it where there was left over and he made sure it was 12 and 12 is a is a spiritual number it's, it represents God's government God's kingdom the 12 disciples the 12 tribes and so I thank God that in this hour he, the, the, those who have been in the back he said the, the last are getting ready to be first you've been in the back God said watch I'm getting ready to elevate you I'm getting ready to elevate you 
Pharaoh is getting ready to call your name. And many of you, you're getting ready to be blessed by your enemies. Pharaoh did not serve God, but God used Pharaoh to bless Joseph so that the covenant would be fulfilled. Otherwise, they would have died. Jacob and them would have died. And God said, you will not die, but live to declare the works of the living God. And so the Bible says, Joseph was the only one who could interpret the dream and he began to give um, Pharaoh divine strategy as to how to survive the famine. And then that's when God was like, okay, the, the, the stage has been set and now I can bring Jacob and, and my people to Goshen, to that fertile place. God is always looking to bless his children. Even in the famine, even in your little bit, God says, I have great plans to prosper you and not to harm you. I have a plan. I have a plan. Even with the painful things you've gone through, I have a plan. I allowed your brothers to sell you out, Joseph. I, I, I allowed it. I made sure that Potiphar was the one who bought you because Potiphar worked for the king. I was the one that allowed the wife to even accuse you of all kind of lies and wickedness because I had to get you to the prison that was connected to the palace. And that's why my word says all things are working together for your good. You don't see it right now, but it's working together for your good. And the Bible said the, the cupbearer and the baker had a dream in the prison. Remember, God was blessing Joseph even at Potiphar's house, blessing him in the prison. He was the leader and everybody was blessed whenever Joseph showed up. God allowed for him to interpret the dreams of these people who was working for Pharaoh. And, and, and the Bible says that J Joseph was like, listen, remember me to the cup here. Remember me when you go back to the palace. And the man forgot. He forgot Joseph. But there came a time when Pharaoh had a dream and nobody can help him. The man, the cupbearer said, I remember. I think it was a cupbearer. I remember. And that's when they sent for Joseph. They, God is getting ready to set, send them to come get you. And the Bible says that they told J Joseph, they said, listen, shave off your beard and come out of the dungeon, dress yourself. And they brought him to the palace and he became second in Command because the first shall be last and the last shall be first. That is the word of the living God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I cover this message in the blood. And there will be no backlash or retaliation of the devil. God is awesome. God is awesome. And listen, I'm just going to keep on working my business, even though it's a little bit. And, and, and those of you who've been following, Click on the link and go get your free account. I'm telling you, God wants you to be self-sufficient. Go on and, and register for your free gold savings account. Amen. And we will show you, we will show you what to do in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Father God, for your word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Be blessed, everyone. I will talk to you guys later.